So here we are in part two of I react to your home setups, the good, the bad, and the ugly. So hopefully with this series, we can look at how people solve their problems of how to 3D print at home safely. And so with that, let's get going. And now a word from our sponsor, Lychee Slicer, us. We are our own sponsor. If you don't know this, Lychee Slicer is a free product, but also we have a paid version, the Lychee Plus or the Lychee Library. It's through those subscriptions that we're able to make all this content for you. And the reason why we make this content is primarily so that everyone has a good time 3D printing to help you solve some of the problems that you may be encountering, encountering, or solve the problems before you even encounter them in the first place. Also, if you could, please like and subscribe to this YouTube channel. It helps me out a lot to continue making content like this for you. And with the very first setup here, it looks like we've got a little Anycubic Mono 4, a really nice printer, one I actually uh, enjoy quite a bit, and a little tiny wash and cure in front of a window. So, uh, of course, then there's a bamboo there as well. Uh, now, people don't know this, but the FDM printers can actually be just as toxic for the air you breathe as resin. And that's because as this thing prints, little microfibers of the plastic are going to essentially float around. You're going to breathe them in. They're going to get inside of your lungs, and they're going to kind of act like asbestos. So even if you're just doing FDM printing, you want to make sure you're venting that air out. Uh, have a little negative air pressure on them just to suck all those little microplastics out um, where they'll, you know, only pollute the environment, not your house. I don't know. At least you won't be bringing it in and you won't get a lung cancer in 20 years. Uh, not to say that will happen. Don't, don't sue me anybody. It's just there's some research out there that suggests you might. I didn't say it. They did. So anyway, um, yeah, everything here just says that they should probably be vented and then closed off. Um, not the safest place. If there's sun coming through that window, that could cure the resin as he's cleaning it and dealing with it. Uh, could even cure the resin inside of the wash and cure. I can see there's some buildup at the bottom. If you don't know why that can be a bad thing, right here you can kind of see we've got some buildup already right here down there in the bottom. Now, when you turn this wash and cure on, that little thing's going to spin and all that gunk on the bottom is going to spin right up. It's going to stick all of your nice new clean print and it's going to make it look like a dirty print. So in the process of washing your print, you're actually making it dirty. The way to solve this is to like always replace your IPA, always filtering. It's a big pain. So instead what I do is I actually just um, dunk it so it doesn't spin it up. And I make sure not to allow my IPA to be exposed to UV light until I'm ready to actually like remove the IPA, put it into like a one gallon bucket, set out on the sun for a couple weeks, at which point I can then pull off some of the cleaner IPA and use that for like a first wash because it definitely still has resin in it. But anyway, that's a little out of topic for this movie, so or for this video. So let's move on. All right. The next thing here is, wow, that's quite a setup. Um, this looks like it's inside of a basement or a shop. Hard to tell. They have a AC unit right above. Uh, I don't think this is a fan. I think this is an AC unit, so it should be blowing cold air in. Uh, I mean, maybe that's sucking it out. I actually don't know, um, but I'm probably not. Lots of printers, really nice. Um, lots of work right here going on. Little coil heater, gotta keep those prints warm. And then a lot of cool stuff going over here with the FDM. Let's see if we can see anything else going on. They've got another little area over here in the corner. This is just a close up of the FDM side. Looks like they could be in a shop. Oh, we got some vent. Okay, so there's some ventilation here. It's going on right up here. Very nice. So there is a vent going on, um, not right above where they're printing the other stuff, but at least in maybe a corner of this basement area, there is some ventilation at least. So it's better than nothing. All right, we got a new user set up. It looks like they're just inside of a little grow tent. This is actually a really good way to do it. I can definitely see here in the back, we've got a vent in the window. So they're doing something. Um, it's the right way to do it. As you can see here, it doesn't take much to go from unhealthy to completely fine and no problem at all. Just a little tiny grow tent, enough to fit your wash and cure and your 3D printer in the same tent. It's not going to be an issue. So easy, clean, works. Oh, yep, here we go. Now, yeah, we couldn't see it from the other angle. In this one, we can definitely see that there is definitely airflow going out this window. I don't know if they had to break those little bricks out to make it work or if this window had the ability to have part of it open up. Not sure. Um, hopefully, you didn't have to break your window to make it work for safety. But if you did, I guess it's still better to be safe than to have a window that came from the like, like the 1970s. All right, another setup, this is in a basement. We've got uh, some good airflow here going out the, the basement. They just kind of turned the AC looks like onto the side. Maybe it's just sucking air out. Um, they've got the everything they need right here. 
Uh, the window, the UV light from the window could affect the wash and cure station, but it's a little bit off to the side, so it might be okay. The one thing, and of course it's inside of a windowsill, so it's not going to be necessarily the most direct sunlight. It's most likely going to be just fine. Uh, yeah, that's going to be an easy setup. My thing I would do is I, instead of using this little tiny silicone mat right here and all this wood, I would get a much larger silicone mat, or you can even get plastic, like transparent plastic mats you, that they use um, for like cupboards and cabinets and um, pantries and stuff like that. You can get them actually, they're pretty big sheets. I would just cover this entire thing. There's actually sheets that they buy for tables specifically for those with kids. If you don't know why having kids, having something to go over your table to protect your table from your kids is smart, uh, have kids and then you'll know. So they sell those things like that and they're actually relatively cheap. I would get something like that because, you know, I know you don't, probably don't care about the table, but it's just about keeping the resin easier to clean up uh, than something like wood. Even if there's a covering on the wood, the resin can still maybe eat, off, eat away from that over time and cause some issues. Ooh, this next one. That is a massive grow tent. That might be the biggest one I've seen so far. Um, look at that. This person can fit everything inside of it. I don't know. I think these are actually not even that expensive either. It's called Cool Grows. So there you go. Cool Grows. Definitely have more room than what they're utilizing in here. Uh, they could fit a lot more in this space. Uh, they, at least they, they put the tablecloth down. Uh, so it's like this cheap throwaway party tablecloth, but it's better than nothing. Uh, a couple silicone mats. Um, again, I would probably look in doing a larger silicone mat. I use the dog mats that come in rather large sizes. And like I said, the other one, there's even the, the plastic table protectors that will cover the entire table. Uh, it would work a little bit better in this one, but to be honest, honestly, that's, that's nitpicking. Um, overall, pretty good setup. Some drawers maybe underneath the table might be nice to help organize some of your stuff. Um, you know, so you don't have to have it all over. Uh, that way, if you do spill, it's not like you're picking stuff up and moving it around to clean it up. All right, this is a, another setup, I believe. They've got the little any cubic heater inside of the grow tent, so the heater's not inside the resin. That's probably a better way to do it, to be honest. You'll still heat up some of the components of the printer, um, so just watch your temperatures. You don't want to make your grow tent, you know, like 28 or 30 degrees Celsius. Looks like they are bringing up that temperature. Just know that's going to wear down the components of the 3D printer a little bit faster. Um, you want to have the printer body chassis a little bit cooler um, and the chamber can be a little bit hotter. Uh, just know if you heat up everything like that, you, you might decrease the life of your printer. So I'd probably have the chamber like 22, 23 degrees Celsius and then it's going to be warmer inside of it. Uh, especially the resin will be warmer and that way everything will last a long time. This might be the same user. Oh, no, it's the same user. Okay, so this is inside the grow tent. This is outside the grow tent. There's the grow tent off here to this, off to the side. They got some, some plastic covering up. So it's just in a basement, unfinished basement. You know, it looks like a gas line right there maybe. So concrete floor. Concrete floors are still uh, absorbent. If you drop resin, it's gonna absorb into the concrete. Not a big deal, but again, maybe put down some plastic or something. Uh, I wouldn't do like plastic that's garbage. I would do like a, a nicer sheet, a little heavier. Uh, just just for this area and then um, behind if you got plastic behind it that's probably okay um, but even still I might hang some uh, like a MDF board with some plastic over the MDF board just to make sure that the fumes can get into the into your house at all into the fiber into the insulation so it doesn't stink later on if you ever do finish the basement uh, those are I'm being very nitpicky here you don't have to do that stuff but if you did it would just make sure that you never had any problems in the future and all that would would be relatively cheap probably under 100 bucks in total all right, this looks like it's inside of a bedroom. Uh, maybe a spare bedroom or spare office, but something that generally would prob was probably initially bedroom. This is not gonna be a safe environment at all. There's a lot of things I see here that are gonna be uh, health issues. Uh, first thing, of course, being, and I've said it many times, but we've got carpet down here. Um, we've got wood, it's, it's fake wood, so it's gonna be very porous because uh, it's just a laminate. Um, MDF or particle board. Uh, this is at least this is the plastic cable here, so it'll be a little bit safer. Yeah, and then we've got uh, lots of watch and cure stuff here. It looks like they're doing some distillation of the IPA. Hopefully not inside. That's super super dangerous if they're doing that inside. You can distill your IPA to get it really clean, but do that outside. Uh, I wouldn't even do it in a garage. I actually print in my bathroom. This is inside of a bathroom. Um, it's got the fan in it that runs all the time, um, and my the bathroom is like waterproof for vapors. So I couldn't say the bathroom was a bit terrible place to 3D print because I do it. So yeah, there you go. That works. Uh, here we go inside of a, it looks like an office area, but they've got the grow tent going in. So here, here's the difference, right? We've got two offices. One, it's got carpet, no containment, no airflow, possibly some distillation going happening inside, but I, but probably not. I'm, I'm assuming they're at least taking that outside to do it. 
Uh, and then here's the other office where, you know, of course, if you have carpet, not everyone can just rip out carpet and install hardwood flooring or something like that. I understand that that's a big upgrade. But you could, you could put some plastic down and, you know, get a grow tent and put it in here like this user did. This is a really good example of how to take and make 3D printing really safe. All right, and that's it for V2 of this one. Again, I hope you learned something new by looking at the good, the bad, and the ugly, some things you should do, some things you definitely should avoid doing within your house, whether you're doing resin 3D printing or even FDM printing, to just keep you and your family or your pets or whatever you have at home safe so you can resin 3D print or FTM 3D print for the foreseeable future. And as always, if you could please like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, share this with any friends who you think might need it. And as always, thank you for watching and have a good day.